Welcome back to Switched to Linux. So today, the Linux Mint team released the beta for 18.2 for both Cinnamon and Mate. We are going to have a look at the Cinnamon version today. And before we dump, jump in here, I'm going to have a little disclaimer that I have not looked at it at all. All I've done is downloaded it. We're going to boot it into a virtual machine. We're actually going to install it into a virtual machine. And we're going to tinker around in there and, and play a little bit. Um, I've chosen to use the Cinnamon version because uh, Cinnamon is what I use on my production computers. Um, we're going to first jump right on into the virtual machine. Um, and then we're going to... Um, and then we are going to go ahead and install it. And while it is installing, we're going to go ahead and look at the production notes. So uh, once again, before we jump in there, if you like my videos and would like to help support me on uh, this channel, you can support me on Patreon. There are also Amazon links below that you can use uh, Amazon if you'd like to do that. Um, so what we're going to do here is, let me minimize that, and then we'll go ahead and uh, transition over here because I did not build a uh, distro screen for this, mostly because uh, I've downloaded it here. So 18.2 Cinnamon 64-bit uh, beta. So I'm going to start up my VirtualBox, and I usually use the same, uh, the same virtual boxes here. Let's see, I think uh, we'll go ahead and use this MX-16 one. Um, it's Ubuntu based, so we're just going to go ahead and, and keep that. And we'll go ahead and drop the ISO in there and boot her up, see what happens. Um, so I read through a few of the production notes. I did not do all of them, um, but uh, what I'm seeing in here is, you know, pretty good stuff. Uh, there's a few different changes, some things that uh, some people have said they've had some issues with stability and cinnamon. They've actually addressed some of those issues. We'll look at those in the production notes when they come out. Now, I personally have not seen any any stability issues in cinnamon on any of my computers, um, but some of it might have to do, are you uh, running your cinnamon spices or things, which I thought might have been disabled for a while at one point in time. Um, I've never actually used them, so um, they apparently are, are back and more stable. Uh, so here we have our cinnamon booted up here. Uh, software rendering mode, okay. So we're back to our regular cinnamon icons, the ones that I'm not using. <laughs> and then now let's just go ahead and have a look, just a real quick look at here. And it, doesn't look, let's see, on the surface, it doesn't look like a whole lot has changed. There is the install multimedia codex. This is something they did, I think, starting in 18.0 or 18.1 is it doesn't necessarily have all the codex. You used to download a copy of it with the codex or a copy without. Now you just download one and you choose uh, to install it. There's a rhythm box, media player. One thing that I had noted um, the other day that I thought really needed a refresh was the backup tool because you can't run backups to a network location. Um, and a lot of people have asked about that. So um, here's what we get. Um, let's uh, look at the file explorer here, see what theme they're giving us by default right here. Uh, oh, duh, I clicked the desktop, not the file. Okay, so it looks like this is, if I'm not mistaken, I thought this was the older theme. I don't even think this is the one that came with 18.0 or 18.1. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and install it and uh, see what happens. Okay, English. And we are going to install third party. Third-party software. Um, I'm guessing that's Codex. I'm used to two checkboxes here. One of those being Codexes, one being third-party software, etc. Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens on that. Uh, we're going to erase the disk and install Linux Mint. Yep. Sorry, MX16. You got deleted. <laughs> Uh, MX16 is also in beta, but I couldn't find a download link for it. It must be something they only uh, do on their on their uh, individual team. Um, so uh, we'll go ahead and uh, look at MX16 when it's finally released, which I heard is going to be a week or two. Um, I didn't verify it over there, but I, I heard MX16 uh, release is coming. 
Come on. Come on. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. It's uh, taking a while. Usually it jumps right into, into these. I'm not sure what's taking so long on this part. So I guess while this is waiting, we're going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to go ahead and switch over to uh, oh, figures. I'm just just in the planning to switch over, and now it wants to now it wants to ask me my questions. It's detecting keyboard layouts. Let's do Tom Tom Virtual Box. We'll just do Mint. Yeah, I'm well aware that's a short password. Thank you, and we'll look, go ahead and log in automatically this time. Almost finished copying files already. Wow. Okay. Well, let's go ahead and have a look at the article. Um, so here's the blog post um, announcing this. There's also, the, like I said, the Mate version as well, if you like the Mate. Um, so you can see the system requirements. Uh, they also give you some, some notes. Uh, you can boat with BIOS or uh, UEFI. Um, they also will be talking about you can do an upgrade from 18.1 to 18.2. Is this something I'm going to do? Um, honestly, I, I don't know. Um, it's really going to depend on, um, it's going to depend on, on some factors like, uh, usually I wouldn't upgrade one of these unless there's something major. Like the only reason I upgraded from 17.0 or 17.3 to 18.0 on my other computer is because I could not get VPNs to work on 17.3 and I needed it to work. That's why I upgraded. And frankly, I'm very glad I did. I'm not sure I'm going to go, this computer here is running 18.1. I'm not sure if it's going to merit me moving to 18.2 or not. I'm not sure. Um, but for those that do want to, you will be able to, um, if you are running the beta on a computer, you will be able to upgrade to the stable release from the beta. Um, so, and of course, if there's bug reports, go ahead and do that. And then, uh, looking at the new features, um, uh, looking at the new features here, um, first thing they talk about, uh, well, the uh, we have the um, cinnamon 3.4. So my current version of cinnamon is uh, I think 3.26, 3.2.6 or something. Uh, this is now 3.4. Now they have one of the most notable improvements is the handling of desktop icons. Now um, this is something that that every now and again my icons do get a little bit messed up. So I am excited if I can put them in rows as long as it's not going to be crazy. Like for example. KDE, I absolutely abhor how they handle their desktop icons. I like cannot put them in the order that I want. I cannot choose to put my desktop icons in whatever order I want. There is in theory a setting that allows me to do that. It doesn't work, at least not on this KDE computer. I've tried it many times. Um, so I'm kind of stuck with the icons landing where they may over there, which I hate. Um, so if they're going to take control of my icons, I'm going to have to protest and not use <laughs> this version. But I want to see how they can handle. I want to make sure I can put them in where I want, but having the option to line the grids would be fine. You can also adjust the, um, the size. Uh, you can adjust by, um, let's see, they also auto oh, they can, can be automated. As long as they're not on, always automatically sorted, that would See, that's the thing that drives me crazy. I use my desktop, and the way KDE is over here, I cannot, while the icons are there, I cannot work off the desktop because I want to put some folders over here, some folders up here, some folders over here, and some folders down here. I quadrant things out for different specific purposes, and if I cannot do that, we have a serious problem. So I'm curious to know what's going to happen. Those are the, some of the questions I'm going to be asking myself. I said they can also change the desktop icons with a click of a button. So we'll see what that looks like. Um, various plugin settings will also now use their own separate processes. Um, so this is the thing that is in theory going to help support uh, the stability that if a plugin crashes, it no longer crashes all of Cinnamon. It just crashes the plugin. Um, so that's good. Um, they talk here about the Cinnamon Spices. This is again something I have not used in Cinnamon. 
Um, but uh, the Spices is now completely controlled by Linux Mint. They audit them all. They are on GitHub. They can examine everything. And they've actually thrown out a lot of, uh, a lot of the Spices uh, over either security concerns or whatever else. So those are now all being audited. So in theory, they should not be as big if they ever were a, a attack vector on the computer. Um, Blueberry for uh, Bluetooth support. This is something that I can't test on this computer because I don't have Bluetooth over here. I do actually have Bluetooth on my other computer, although I usually disable it. Uh, Bluetooth is one of those things like wireless. I really don't want it on a computer unless I have a specific need for it. It's one of the reasons I'm really leaning against getting one of the new Raspberry Pis that has the Bluetooth and the wireless built on board. I kind of want an option where it's not on board, you know, or an option to say yes on board or not on board. And I don't know if I can switch it on or off or whatever else. Um, but anyway, um, I would not be able to test the Bluetooth on this computer, um, but in theory they have helped to re uh, stabilize that, which I know has been a big deal for some people. A lot of work went to XEd, the generic text editor. Okay, um, not sure about that one. I'm trying to think what I'll, I'll have to see what I use over here for basic text edits. Um, it's just whatever the basic uh, it's just text editor. I'm guessing it's uh, XED text editor. I'm guessing, let's see. I don't know if it's the same one or not. I guess it is the same text editor, but they have built in the darker themes. That's okay. So that's a question. I do have darker themes. Let me look at my text editor real quick here. Eh, see, I don't know. I don't, I'm not sure what to make of that because. As you can see, my generic text editor already has the darker theme, theme built in. So, um, uh, I don't know, maybe there's more tools or whatever available there. Not sure, but uh, we'll look at that. Um, X Player, X Media Player also received some improvements to its user interface. I, you know, I, this is one that I've never really been a huge fan of the media player on this. For me, what's really missing is a lot of uh, a lot of metadata. I cannot load up a video and have a quick look at metadata, and that to me is one of those things that uh, uh, that is a, a problem or a challenge to me. Uh, so it'll be neat to see. Um, and since I'm still running 18.1 here on this computer, we can actually jump back and forth and have a look at some of these differences. Uh, the picks is something I generally don't use. Um, I don't like automated uh, software, and picks always felt too automated. You tell me, to plug in an iPhone, it's like, oh, you want to download with picks? No, I can manage my files on my own. Thank you. Um, X Reader, X Viewer. Looks like it's just redesigning toolbars. Um, Update Manager looks like it's different. Uh, software sources, form packages. Our package is not provided by any repository. Will differ, make it easier to remove or to downgrade packages. Select all buttons were added. Okay, so you can now select all and uh, remove individual packages. Okay, that's good. Features brand new login screen, uses light DM display manager. Uh, so we'll have a quick look at that. I kind of like the one that's uh, on there, but it's I'm not married to it. Okay, login screen editing. Seria is still available in the repositories, but no longer installed by default. So if you do use your uh, uh, a CD-ROM for writing, you will have to install it. This is something that some people criticize, um, you know. But it is a reality. More and more computers are shipping without CD-ROMs, and so it it's something that makes sense as long as people know it's it exists. So it's good. It's available in the repository. It's just not downloaded, you know. And I'm I'm probably okay with that. Um, during installation, root account is given a random password. You can use sudo with your own password. What? During installation, the root account is given a random password. Can I know what it is? I guess I could change it with sudo, but... I don't think I want, you know, honestly, I don't think I want my root password to be assigned randomly. <laughs> Not sure how I feel about that. Linux Mint 18.2 features Cinnamon 3.4, Linux Kernel 4.8, and Ubuntu 16.04 package base. Okay, so this is a uh, security updates, uh, LTS security updates for five years.
and it looks like upgrading will be good until 2018. So that's that. Let's see if we are done. Hey, just in time. We are done. Let me go ahead and transition over here. We're going to keep that site open and we're going to go ahead and push restart now. All right. So Go ahead and give this a chance to reboot itself. <clears throat> Still sounds the same on startup. <laughs> All right, so we have a nice uh, uh, welcome screen, so we can show it at uh, uh, we can show it at startup. Let's see what happens when we click on new features and disable the notification. You probably didn't see it. Okay, so I think that that just booted up the very screen we we're just looking at. Okay, so let's go ahead and keep that there. Uh, let's start by having a look at the update manager. They said that was different. So we're going to keep it on the middle option there. Okay, update manager received many improvements, still has the same mission, tackles the same issues before keeping your computer safe, providing bug fixes and protecting you from regressions, but presents things slightly different. Policies and level definitions were refined to better filter updates depending on their level of impact. Uh, most updates are now level two. Application updates that do not impact the OS are level one. Toolkits and development environments. Are, are level three and kernels are at level four. I think that's different. I think that it was uh, levels one through three. Um, so here there's level twos and level fours. So yeah, it looks like um, uh, looks like that's uh, uh, looks fine. We're gonna go ahead and install the updates there. Let's go ahead and do that. <clears throat> Level five is extremely rare. This level is de dedicated to flagging dangerous or broken updates. Okay. And it says here more information was added on kernels. So we get, we'll go, go ahead and have a look at these. So here's the information on the kernels there. So I'm wondering One of the things that I was curious about, like what I really liked in 17, one of the things that I really did not like about um, about uh, moving up to Linux Mint 18 is I did not like um, how they manage the kernels because I could, it, it used to be a whole lot easier to manage your kernels on here, but now it's like I could upgrade easily, but I could never, I, on, once I switched to 18, going back, so if I, upgraded a kernel and it broke something it's very difficult to go back um but uh on uh, 17.3 it was actually very easy to roll back to a previous kernel from within here so okay so there's that let's just have a look at uh let's have a look at some of the themes like i'm curious that the themes are the themes are a little bit different um looks like the themes are a little bit different than I remember them. Although being as said, I changed the themes pretty early on. It's uh, maybe I am possibly mistaken. Let's have a look at the, the available themes. So yeah, I thought that they used uh, either mint Y or mint Y dark. Oh, cinnamon just crashed. That's exciting. Um, sure. Let's go ahead and restart cinnamon. Well, so much for that cinnamon being stable. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I thought that, uh, 18 shipped with either mint Y or mint Y dark. I thought that it did not come with mint X. I thought that it was, uh, one of these ones. Um, and again, let's just go back to what I thought. Eh, I don't remember it being that dark. And then Linux Mint, yeah, I thought it went came with this one here. I thought these were the defaults before. 
Um, so I'm not sure if that's uh, if they just haven't finalized this. I always let's see, was it the cinnamon I preferred? I think no, it was the Linux Mint. I think it was the Linux Mint was the one that I I, I always generally preferred. We get a little bit of the transparency here. Um, although I I really don't like this icon pack. I think that was the, this one over here. I usually just use the GNOME icon packs. Um, this is my preferred. Um, but you can see those settings there. Let's go ahead and have a look at the rest of the settings. Um, seeing if anything else sticks out to me as different. Firewalls probably not dis uh, enabled on default. Usually they're not. So that is correct. So it is not enabled on, on default, uh, on install. So I'm not seeing anything else here that, that really looks different. Let's go ahead and have a look at some of the uh, application packages they were talking about. Um, let's see, they had mentioned, things they had mentioned is the text editor. And I'm going to drop out of here so I can boot up a text editor over here as well. So here is a side by side. The one on the uh, this guy here is the text editor on 18.1, and this one over here is 18.2. Um, One point two point two one point four point two. Okay. Just seeing if there's anything obviously different uh, from the toolbar standpoint. I thought that's what they were talking about. Okay. So you go back and see what they said about it. A lot of work went into it. User interface features really exciting visual improvements. For, for example, it comes with a smart side and bottom bars, which automatically adjust to the loaded content. You can show or hide with a click of a button. Okay, let's have a look at that. Um... Okay, so this is what we're looking at here is here's the, the sidebar button. This one, of course, does not have it. And not seeing anything else really different in the footer. I thought that's what they had said. But yeah, the sidebar here, um, file browser, that's actually a neat feature to have a, a sidebar uh, functionality on here. I like that. That's, that's cool. I can dig that. The ability to... Prefer darker themes was added. So if you're using Linux Mint Y darker, for example, you can select whether you want your text editor should be light or dark. Okay, that's what they were talking about. All right, word wrap is made more accessible and added to the menu so you can enable or disable that. That's actually nice, um, a nice function because like if you're ever used to using um, uh, Notepad on, on Microsoft, you know, it's like the lines could go forever in one direction. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to, you know, figure that out. You can now zoom in and out with the menu, keyboard shortcuts. Okay, so it looks like there's just a lot of a lot of different little things. Let's have a look at the at the X player there because uh, that's um, yet another thing that uh, I think it's under sound and video, right? Okay. Okay. So I don't have a movie I can throw on here, but uh, let's see. So this is one of my major gripes I was talking about. Let's see, this one, this one here actually does say it gives me the information. Now I'm confuzzlicated because every time, every single time I try and load up one of these, maybe I'm not doing it on this computer. Maybe it's my uh, my 18.0 computer <laughs> I'm doing this. But I like seeing this, uh, uh, this ability to see the codex information 
on a video. Let me uh, let me see if I can find a video here and have a have a look at that. Um, load this up. Okay, so there's my intro video. Yeah, this this information I can never find, and now all of a sudden I can find it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, maybe it's the matter, the function, I always look for this on my other computer and I just never really have bothered looking for it on this one, but that's kind of what I was looking, looking for. Over here, of course, it's telling me playlists, not, not media information. Let's have another look at what, uh, it says here. Uh, receive some improvements to the user interface, all the controls and the seeker bar, which were placed in the same line and the status bar was removed to make the application more compact. Okay, so the status bar was removed. Okay, so the status bar down here, so this is removed to make it more compact, and then they put these controls all on the same line. I can get behind that. That's good, uh, good user interface changes. I can, uh, I can dig that. Um, I'm not going to have a look at pics just because I'm not familiar with it quite as much. Um, but more user interface things, X reader, more user interface things. Toolbar is redesigned and it's now receiving support for dark themes. So let's have a look at that. Except this one, image magic. Uh, just X, X reader. Not sure I've used that one either. I guess it's image viewer, right? Yes. Image viewer. All right. So we're going to load up over here. Okay, so that's what they're talking about with adding dark theme support. Um, so I have similar themes running and you'll see here that this is all in the darker view versus maybe you might want to have it a little bit um, like I should, what I should see on my particular theme that I'm running this on right now is I should see it uh, black up on the top bar. I should see it black on the toolbar, but I should see white down here. And that's probably what they're talking about fixing. Um, they've also adjusted the um, adjusted the menu bar, and I, if I had the same icon packs, I I think running or the same uh, toolkits running, I I might have uh, similar views there. But uh, let's have a look. Uh, toolbar is redesigned, receives some support for darker themes, so that's good. Then we had a look at the update manager, and let's go ahead and just have a quick look at the software sources in the new one. I'm gonna go back to full screen here. Seeing if there's anything else. I'm not seeing anything else in the um, in the applications that have really changed as far as what's installed. Everything else is pretty much looking the same, which you'd probably expect from an 18.1 to an Giving me the spinny whirl wheel there. There we go. Okay. So there's this official, there's PPAs, additional repositories, navigation, maintenance. Okay. going to boot up the, uh, put the two side by side. So just looking at them, uh, just looking at them side by side, it's, it looks like there's, there's, um, of just a few, probably a negligible amount of changes and things. 
See, total all packages is slightly different. That could like, I um, and this guy here is the, actually the one with my main system, which has PPAs installed. So in theory, then uh, they have added some extra packages here and there. Um, so that's kind of, um, you know, nothing really has changed in that department. I'm, I'm pretty much going to say, of course here now we can do the select all, um, to have a look at that. And let's see. Let's have a quick look at the login screen. That's the next thing they were talking about here. Okay, now I'm confuzzled um, because now it looks we have <laughs> exactly the uh, we have the old <laughs> the Ubuntu 16 login screen. Um, I really like the one on 18.1 better, actually. Thank you. Get nice pictures. It's completely customized. I'm I'm confuzzled on this. Um, I thought that was supposed to be different. It seems to have rolled back to Ubuntu 16.04's screen only. Um, I like. 18.1 better there, um, unless I'm missing something, which I very well could be. So uh, there you have it. Um, that is 18.2. Uh, just quick impressions here. Um, and I didn't look at, let's see, see if I can find, I don't even know where to install sp spices from, honestly. Um, just not something I've ever cared to do. Um, I was going to have a quick look at that if I could. But um, Overall uh, impressions, it looks um, it looks like it's not um, uh, not a groundbreaking change. A few adjustments in the UI that are uh, that are good. Um, oh, you know what? Duh! I totally forgot to look at my folders, my um, desktop here. All right, we're gonna go ahead and new folder. This one. Do another new folder. That one. Oh Lord, that's driving me mad. Um, desktop settings. Let's have a look at our desktop settings. All right. Okay, so it looks like we can do that. Let me see how can I adjust the Okay, so here's desktop. Okay, smaller, normal, larger. Okay, so turn off auto arrange and keep aligned to grid. <laughs> okay, good. That was going to drive me mad. Now, but begs the question can I do that over here? Apparently not. If anybody knows how to do that on KDE, please let me know. That's the I, one of those things that I really hate about that. Okay, so you can uh, set these to auto arrange, and then you can auto arrange them by the various types. You can arrange them vertical or horizontal. You can align them to a grid or disalign them to a grid. This is actually awesome, very awesome, because it gives me it. The, what I like about this is it gives me control. It doesn't remove control. It gives me other ways to control. So if I do want everything to auto align, I can do that. But if I want to have everything so that I can align it, I can do that as well. So I like that. I like the control that, that they're giving me. I can still put this stuff over here. I can put other stuff over there. I thought they said I can also adjust the individual size of an icon. Yeah, I thought it said I could adjust the individual size of an icon, of a, of a single icon, but uh, not exactly sure where that setting would be. Um, but that aligning to grid is nice. I, I like that. That's, a, that's a, a worthy thing, is the ability to align from a grid. 
All right, so uh, everything else here, let's see. Let me actually do a quick look as well at um, system info. I just want to have a quick look here. All right, so we are 18.2, cinnamon version 3.2. 4.1 kernel is 4.8 and I was hoping they'd give me like the Nemo version I'm curious to know the Nemo version so let me come down here Nemo version 3.4.2 all right so actually if I remember correctly I think that's uh, quite a bit better than the new peppermint I'm just gonna have a quick look at this Nemo version 3.2.2 so they've upgraded uh, you know upgraded a lot of the different packages so I guess there you have it um, there is your um, uh, there is your Linux Mint 18.02 beta um, so in in brief recap it looks like uh, we did have that one uh, cinnamon crash um, so but it did seem to recover itself pretty well everything else seems pretty normal upgraded packages there's some ui advantages that that are there um overall i like it um i i not don't necessarily like it enough that i'm going to upgrade my 18.1 to my 18.2 but i would have absolutely no qualms about putting 18.2 on a computer if i had to redo a linux uh, a linux computer right now um, like this one crashed or something, I sure I'd rebuild it with 18.2, but everything's working on 18.1. I don't have any issues, and uh, so I'm just going to go ahead and keep what I have. But um, a lot of those good uh, good things, the uh, the ability to uh, sort your icons, updated packages, the new UI, um, the uh, you know everything uh, everything on it so far. I'm just going to have a quick look to see if the uh, see what my options look like on this desktop uh, yeah the older the older menu here was just right click and I can organize desktop by name um, but then I assume I could go go out so auto organize was the function that was that was added so um, you know there is uh, there's a lot of advantages to this uh, to this new version I can't wait for it to actually come out maybe we'll I'll have a quick poke around at it um, and uh, I may or may not do another video when it's finally stably released. But this was, uh, you know, we, we had that one small small bug, but nothing major. Um, and I think that uh, uh, that's probably fine. I'm not sure that it looks like they, they regressed in some of their packages, like the themes that are installed. That might be finalized in, in the final release. That might just not be something that they're... Uh, they're working on in the beta, uh, but otherwise it looks great. Um, updates to packages, uh, security updates, better management of your um, update manager, uh, as far as better better organization, seeing things a little bit better. Um, great distro, looks like a great distro. Again, Linux Mint Cinnamon is what I use. It's my favorite distro. Um, so I was really excited to log in here and see that um, they had done that. Um, if you guys would like me to have a look at the Mate version, as another distro review, I am not opposed to throwing up another distro review this week looking at that. Um, and uh, But hey, um, I hope that you enjoy this and uh, uh, thanks for watching. Again, if you do want to help support us at Switch to Linux, um, you can have a look at my Patreon page at uh, patreon.com forward slash Tom M. And there are Amazon links below. So if you are looking to buy something on Amazon in the near future, then uh, you can go ahead and click on the link below there, buy whatever you want, and Amazon will send a uh, small, small portion of the sale to switch to Linux. So thanks for watching, everybody, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.